Well, I'm uh, Ben Alanak. I'm a professor of theoretical physics at the University of Cambridge. Ben, um, can you talk to us about what limits there are to what we can actually observe both in our own lives and in terms of physics? Well, in terms of us as humans and the human body, there are limits to what you can hear. Your ears only hear certain frequencies, so um, that's one limit to observation. Um, and, uh, you know, only above certain uh, sound levels, obviously, and we're all aware of this. But also our eyes. We can see um, pretty much as far as you like. If you look out at a star, you know, that's light years um, away, right? So your eyes will see a long way. Um, but uh, they'll only see reasonably bright things. But also there's, um, there's a limit to the, what's called the angular resolution. So um, if two things get, if you, one of the stars that you see might actually be two stars that are very separated by a really tiny angle. And because of the size of your eye, there's like a physical limit to um, how much you could tell that angle uh, apart. So you wouldn't be able to resolve it, it'd just look like one star. So that's another limit, mm. um, for instance. And there's limits to, as with hearing frequencies, there's certain things that we can't, sounds we can't hear, there's limits to certain uh, light frequencies that we Absolutely. can't Absolutely, so we're aware of, you know, um, red, orange, yellow, green, the, the visible spectrum of, of light, but actually if the wavelength changes further, you get into the ultraviolet, and um, humans don't see ultraviolet, but insects do, for instance. And on the other side, there's infrared. And you can extend this uh, further. Now, there's a, um, there's a guy that's been modified cybernetically um, nine years ago. He's a Norwegian guy, I forget the name. But he's, he's got um, complete color blindness. So it only happens in males. It's quite rare. So he sees the world in black and white. And he's had an Im a camera implanted uh, in front of his eyes. And it turns color that it sees into sound and it plays it on his, on his skull. So it get, the sound gets transmitted through his, through his bone into his ear, and he's uh, had it enhanced so he can see, uh, for example, infrared uh, light now. So apparently when someone's there with an old school remote that works in infrared, he, can, he hears it, um, his camera hears it, yeah. So he's, he's got complete synesthesia now, so he dreams in his version of color. Um, he can hear colors. When the, when the phone rings, it sounds purple, apparently. Um, etc. So, um, okay, unless you get enhanced like that yeah. cybernetically, then um, yeah, there are limits. So there's a limit to what kind of information we can take in. The other kind of limits people often think of, um, particularly to do with, with vision, um, is how far you can see, which you talked about, but also how small a thing you can see. Um, what are the limits in terms of that and what technological advances have happened that help us see smaller and smaller well, objects? The, the obvious thing uh, is the microscope, uh, which we're all aware of, or, or just the lens, you know, blows, blows up the magnification. You can use bigger uh, lenses to see more angular resolution, see the stars that are really closely separated. Um, so that's one example. But when you get down to a certain level, down at the level of, um, say, a DNA mo molecule, no microscope is going to help you see, um, see that. So you have to use other techniques, other measuring techniques to, for example, um, uh, MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging. Um, so it makes the mag little magnetic fields in uh, water oscillate and it can detect through a disturbance in the electromagnetic field, but th so through technological mo means it can tell where the water is in the body. And then it reconstructs it all using a computer program and gives you a picture of where the water is. But it's not like seeing in the usual sense. But in fact, is it? Because when we see something, nothing gets to the centre of your brain without going through some visual processing with some nerves just behind um, the eyeball. So there's already some processing before it gets, before you're aware of it, before you know your CPU, your computer in the middle of your brain um, gets gets the information. It's already been processed, so it's not as different um, observing something through um, some instrument that you've built than it is just observing it yourself. If you think of it in terms of you know the hardware that you're given, which is your body and the nerves and the and the brain and so on. So just some of the processing is done for you outside of your own body and then... Yeah. yeah. And basically it's a, 
you can think of it as an extension of this um, uh, of this cyborg um, thing. You know, except we're not just build, we're not building them into the body, but we have machines elsewhere that are doing the detecting or enhancing our vision to smaller distance scales and so on.